Welcome, welcome into One Take Tonight. He's Reese. I'm Dan. What a start to the week here in California. Coachella just wrapped its second weekend, the only festival in the country to do the same act two weeks in a row. Upon wrapping on Sunday, festival officials were immediately sued by the Grateful Dead for copyright infringement. Speaking of music festivals, Outside Lands announced their lineup today for the August Music Festival with headliners including Sturgill Simpson, The Postal Service, Jungle, and K. Tronada, to which anyone over the age of 24 said, Who the f*** are these people? Construction began on the high-speed rail from Los Angeles to Las Vegas yesterday, and there's a lot of excitement in the air. Everyone but the climate activists, not the biggest fans. The good news is that Ipe Misuhara bet the over for unemployed climate activists on the tracks per week and pledged his profits to help fund the project. So, kids, you yeah. stopped it. Okay. Yeah, that was, that, that, was, you, you, that was a good one you wrote there, producers. That was good. good. Former first-round pick Zach Wilson was traded to the Denver Broncos today for a sixth and seventh-round uh, pick swap in the 2024 NFL Draft. Teams around the AFC East are shocked and sorry to see him leave. He was usually a pretty easy win. Uh, even fellow draft class member Mac Jones uh, was quoted as calling him the worst draft pick since Mac Jones. All right, we've got a great show. Blogs of the week. What's in the news? And for the brand producer, Reese, cue the music. Welcome into Blogs of the Week. Producer Reese has been a monster Short King spring so far. You had Short King of the Month. You had Short Kings in the Wild. Talk to us about the Short Kings. The Short King spring has been called the greatest Short King spring of the decade, Dan. Um, yep, like you said, we had our boy Santa Cruz Medicinals. Not sure if he's 100% a Short King. Rumor has it. He barely makes the cutoff. Um, short Kings in the Wild. We have a lot of, uh, you know, Short Kings pulling some shenanigans in bars, standing on bar stools to increase their height, stuff yep. like that. But overall, it's been good, man. Yeah, we've had, uh, you know, the official announcement was about a month ago. Uh, yep. the, the anti-Short King Illuminati tried to oh. silence silence producer Reese, the leader. But uh, There were some folks trying to silence that announcement, which was an electric announcement. So It, it happened, man, but we're prevailing. When the video came back, Short King Spring ensues. We're still going, baby. That Short King's in the wild. Uh, can you talk to me just from, like, the Short King perspective as an expert and leader yourself? Yeah. What needs to go into that? So say there's, like, a tall female that you're interested in around the bar, but you need to, you need to show her that you're interested, but do you show yourself getting on top of the, the bar stool or do you like try to do it in a coy, sneaky way? You know what, Dan, that's a good question. I've asked that myself after writing that blog. And I think the answer to that is yes, the presentation does matter. You know, I would rather not do it in a sneaky way, you know, as no. to try and hide her height. Cause eventually you're going to have to get off that stool. You know, when you're taking yeah. that babe home, she's going to realize that you dropped another six inches all of a sudden. But, yeah. um, you know, you gotta, you kind of gotta poke fun at yourself, you know, don't demean yourself, but poke fun at yourself, you know, for your height a little bit, have some fun with it, you know? So yeah, I would say show yourself getting on that stool, show yourself, show, d display yourself as a true short king that you are, you know? Yeah. I think that's electric. I think that's electric. Coachella, I talked about it in the monologue here. Lana Del Rey and Lil Uzi Vert, speaking of short kings, Lil Uzi Vert, I mean, he just put the whole festival in his back pocket. He's got to be, at least in the 2020s, the greatest festival performer that I've seen. I mean, I, I didn't like actually it. go to the show in Coachella, but I felt like I was there with the energy even through the live stream. Now, Coachella, shout out to them. Outstanding uh, outstanding live stream capabilities. I, I, you kind of feel like you're there. I, I, does it even make sense to invest that much in it? Because it's like, why would you even <laughs> haul your ass down to Coachella if you can just watch it on, on uh, and have a great at-home experience? That's a topic for a different day, I suppose. But Lou yeah. ever dominated. He's been dominating since Outside Lands 2022. Another short king just coming in and crushing it. Lil Uzi Vert does hold a special place in uh, the One Take Mafia's heart. I'll be honest, Dan. Especially mine, too. He's probably about a little bit taller than me. But, again, the sentiment comes from Outside Lands 2022 when, uh, yep. yeah, the great, uh, you know, Danny Dials and his crew tried to get up on stage. That was legendary. I don't know what happened, but it was legendary. I don't know what happened either, man. That was, yeah. uh, that was a, day, a day for the books. Ryan Garcia, a massive fight this weekend. Our friend Tavis, quite happy. His fellow Mexicano, even though they're, they're, neither of them can speak Spanish, so I don't know if they can claim the Mexican card. That's a topic, another topic for a different day. But Ryan Garcia, massive fight. He came in with a lot of weird, weird antics, missed weight, drank a beer at his weigh-in, and then he comes out and kind of dominates for the second half of the fight. 
he won technically on the scorecards, but had three knockdowns. Probably could have been, uh, you know, there was some talk about the ref getting a little bit overly involved, and he kind of did get overly involved with a couple of long counts there and pushing Ryan back a couple times. But uh, it was a sweet fight. It was a sweet fight. So credit to Ryan Garcia, another outstanding performance from from uh, from. King Ryan. I don't know. Who, I don't know how to describe. I don't want to call him King Ryan. It's kind of cringe. But yeah, that is cringe. That's, that's, rumor, that's rumor has it he faked all those antics Apparently. prior to the fight. What, what is your take on that, Dan? He he did what? He, he, rumor has it he faked all those antics uh, before the he fight. He faked all the antics. I don't know. I think he's he's very similar. It, going back, he's like the Oscar De La Hoya of this generation. But okay. Oscar De La Hoya didn't have social media and uh, <laughs> instant access to like. So Oscar's his promoter. Um, yeah, and he definitely was a bit of a, a wild card himself. Yeah, uh, back yeah. in the early two thousands and even late nineties. And uh, but yeah, I mean, dude, Ryan, he he's he's just a a really outstanding young prospect. He's more of a, he's more than a prospect now. He's a he's a, he's a, a face of boxing in some ways. So that's electric, man. Yeah, gotta gotta give him hats off. I thought Devin Haney was gonna come in and dominate him, but uh, happy for our guy Ti. He wants some cash, so. Uh, Hopefully that can go towards his uh, other gambling debts and maybe even towards a new set of golf clubs. Marina Bars, this is your last blog here, Producer Reese. So it's Short King Spring. A couple weeks from now, we're having the One Take Mafia get together. Uh, Cinco de Mayo weekend in the marina. Yep. Top three Marina Bars. A little bit of a question, uh, at, at least from my perspective, at number three. Yeah. But uh, the first two were, were exactly on point. You know, Short King Spring and Marina Bars, they go hand in hand a lot. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, you see a lot of short kings out there, you know, doing their best, you know, That's right. I, I was just trying to give the lay of the land out there for other short kings yep. who wanted to make their yep. pilgrimage, you know, to the Marina, you know, to celebrate and uh, yep. find a tall queen for themselves. So, yeah. Yeah. Number three, Westwood, a little bit questionable there. Uh, there was some other bars that could have taken that slot. You know, what came into number two was, uh, you know, Comic Club. And then number one was Balboa Cafe, which I think yeah. you and I could both agree was the most electric bar in the marina for the short kids. Yeah, once that, when that place is going, it's pretty tough to compete with. Uh, yeah. yeah. Babes, yeah. babes love that spot. So I would have put Mauna Loa at number three there. I think that place gets pretty high. It's a little bit like trash here. You know? Yeah. Westwood I, is, uh, Westwood's, uh, that's cool too. Yeah. No, I like Mauna Loa. I've been there once with Danny Dials. That was, that was an electric experience back in. Uh, yeah, that was electric. August 20th. Electric there. experience. Electric experience. All right, what's in the news? Coming up next. Welcome into What's in the News. Before we get to it, let's get a quick shout out to our sponsor, Skin Tie. Looking to up your fashion game this spring outside of your next Sartoro suit and want to look like you just came from the south of France and or Monaco? Then check out our friends at Skin Tie. I'm currently rocking one of their fabulous products here. Uh, Absolute electric factory. I mean, look at this thing yellow, it's like gold. It's like casual, it's chic as well. Uh, they've got different color styles for men's and women's, and they also make these incredible pants. Look at these, look at these electric factory pants producers, you know? These are like, this. speaking of, we've been talking a lot about the festival game coming up. You rock these at the festival. Uh, you know, outside lands coming up. It's like the gals are just coming up, you know, wanting to make out with producer Reese, Tall Queen, Short Kings. It's, uh, everyone can rock them. Uh, shout out to our guy Christoph here. Get them online at skintie.com slash one take. What's in the news? We got our boy RFK. RFK's, uh, this is from the Washington Post here, RFK Jr.'s quintessential campaign position, the blockchain budget. <laughs> I think this is awesome. Kind of hilarious. Producer, he's a big blockchain guy. Speaking yeah. at a rally over the weekend, uh, independent presidential candidate RFK Jr. had a different idea. We're going to put the entire U.S. budget on a blockchain, he said in Michigan, so that every American can uh, look at every budget item in the entire budget at any time, 24 hours a day. We're going to have 300 million eyeballs on our budget, and if someone is spending $16,000 for a toilet seat. Everyone's going to know about it. Producer Reese, you're an RFK guy, it seems like, yeah. these days, after going to his rally last month. Oh, yeah. What do you got on the blockchain budget? Yeah, you know, big guy on the blockchain budget. You know, I've been doing a lot of research on this topic the past month or so after learning about what it is and stuff. I know. You're an expert on blockchain, Producer Reese. For sure, man. For sure. No, yeah. You know, blockchain, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> You know, like, I love this move. I think it's hilarious. I think it's outstanding. And I think it's like RFK is a little bit weird. But at the same time, when you come up with cool ideas that are innovative and actually have a vision, then you're going to get you're going to get me listening, at least to your producers. So I think it's like a lot of folks don't like to see the lack of transparency in government spending. Yeah, I think that's like 
You can just, it's just kind of like blank check for whatever the hell they want to spend it on a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, and like seeing, having accountability to say, okay, we spent X on this, that, and the other thing. It's like, okay, now folks can make more informed decisions about where tax dollars are going and make better uh, voting decisions moving forward instead of just kind of not really knowing the ins and outs and, and uh, of where, where, budget is being allocated. So I, I love uh, that framework, Dan, you know, I, th- I think, I think I love it so much that we should introduce it into one take media, you know, and figure out where all the budget is going sometimes. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, 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 fig- Dang, we'll, we'll figure that out one day, brother. Yeah. Yeah. I might have to, uh, yeah, give, uh, producer Reese the, the password to my bank account then. Cause that's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, when when payroll is a little bit late, you know, it's like, oh, Dan, you racked up a nice fat bill at the Balboa Cafe the other night. What's uh, what the hell's the deal there, brother? So, That's it could be something that we think about incorporating. So, credit to RFK. I love the innovation here. He might say some weird stuff every once in a while, but I love the innovation. San Francisco. Next up, this is from ABC Seven. San Francisco sues Oakland over proposed airport name change. San Francisco is suing its neighbor across the bay over a plan to change the name of Oakland's airport. Earlier this month, the Port of Oakland's commissioners voted unanimously to change the name of Oakland International Airport to San Francisco Bay Oakland International Airport. This is a bit of a wild move, if you ask me. I think it's just like Oakland's down bad right now, it seems like. Yeah, they're, they're, they're reaching, struggling bro. They're reaching I'm like, huh. they're, uh, you know, they lost the Raiders, they lost the, the Warriors, now they lost the A's as of earlier this month. And now they're just they're just kind of fighting for the last tooth and nail. Yikes. Um, it's it's not a great look brand wise. So I don't know. To our friends in Oakland, you know, we're we're with you. But this is I don't think this is the way to go about it. Pretty sure he's. Yeah, as someone who's never been on an airplane before, um, I can say <laughs> I don't really mind the name change. But yeah, Oakland needs to step up their game a little bit, man. Yeah, this is this is low hanging fruit that they're 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 going for. So you know, let's. You might have to talk to our guy Ti. I mean, Ti is like. I, I think Oakland needs a savior, and it very well could be our guy. He could be, man. He could be. He, he could right, he's be out man. there, and I can't remember the neighborhood he's in exactly. But, I mean, Oakland's – they're struggling, man. They don't have – I mean, they lost – the only In-N-Out to ever close in the history of In-N-Out Burger is that in Oakland. <laughs> That's like, terrible. Yeah. In-N-Out Burger just prints money, and even in Oakland, they were just like, nah, just too much – too much BS going on, too much theft, robbery, whatever the hell else is happening. So Sad, sad. You just hate to see it, man. You hate to see it. Now they're just trying to like but, – but logistically, if you're – say you're coming to California for the first time and you see San Francisco in the name of an airport. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, you, and, you, and you land in Oakland. Yeah, that's uh... – <laughs> you like, <laughs> You're going to be misled. Yeah. How pissed would you be? I would be so outrageously pissed. I'd be like, well, like what? It, it's kind of similar to when you fly to New York and you land in Newark. And you're like, the hell is this? This is not New York. I'm in Jersey right now, you know? Dang. Producer yeah. East coming yeah. and dropping some knowledge. That's facts. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't. I've never been on a plane before. This is just. I don't think you've ever home. left your, your basement. And yeah, when we, whenever we even go out and film, it's just like yeah. hologram producer Reese because he doesn't leave his basement. He's always just <laughs> in, his, uh, in his cellar. So Oakland, prayers up, man. Prayers up. We're, uh, we're, we're hoping, we're hoping for some, some. Uh, good results. And San Francisco, they're probably going to win that lawsuit. So we'll see, man. We'll see. All right. God bless. More of the brand, and then we'll wrap it up. <laughs> Wrapping it up here with For the Brand. Producer Reese, May 4th is a day that I was pumped on, but now it looks like we have a scheduling conflict. We got Mavericks Awards, yeah. one of our favorite events. We love everyone down at Mavericks. And we also got the Pond Skim up in Lake Tahoe, Olympic Valley. It's something that we wanted to, of course, invest in as far as the community is concerned. I don't know what to yeah. do, man. It's a, it's a tough one. Yeah, you know, this is very similar to producer Reese on a Saturday night, you know, when he when he tries to, to bag two 10 out of 10 marina babes, you know. Um, you, can't, you can't have both, Dan. You can't have both. You know, you got to reschedule, yeah. man. I'm hoping one of these events gets pushed back by some miracle. Uh, that way we can yeah. do both. You know, I, I hate to see it, though. You know, like you said, man, this is tough. It is um, tough, man, and I know that that happens to you a lot. You just every time we go out, it's like it's just it's just a constant issue. So I feel bad for you, man. Honestly, it's like you get some of these babes that yeah just need yeah. more and more attention. You know, you get up on that stool, and it's uh, it's just irresistible. But I don't, yeah, it's tough. I mean, we could try to do both, but it would just be too much logistically if we get to Palisades at like noon, yeah. kicks off at one. What are we gonna bomb it down to Half Moon Bay? Like, 
We, I or, mean, it, it's three. possible. We'd just, we would just oh. be super gassed, you know, and the, the effort no, that we would put it's out. Better to do, it's better to do, we would just kind of do a half, half-hearted half effort on both, I think, or at least yeah. an average. So. That's what, that's what I was going to bring up is that it wouldn't be like a full, we wouldn't be all there, you know, mentally. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens there. I'll talk to, talk to our boy Cuvier as well as uh, our boy Patrick. There. Shout out Patrick from... Uh, from from Palisades Sartoro Suit Week. That's an exciting one. That's good for morale. We got a couple suits coming in. I got one for our sponsored athlete Will Sandy. That should be coming in tomorrow. And then I got a couple new ones. So uh, as much as we love the navy blue here, this is the classic navy. But uh, that's always good for morale here. Shout out Sartoro, man. Yeah, Will Sandy is going to be the best looking dude at prom. So <laughs> Thanks, <bro>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. He hopefully hopefully he gets some some photos that he can send to Andy, you know, and then you know that'd be yeah. hype. That'd be hype, man. I know open up be, a new uh, demographic for Andy himself. So dude, you know. that would be yeah. I think yeah, for the the younger demo, getting. I think I feel like dude, who wants to go to men's warehouse if you're like, uh, <laughs> well, in the in the younger demo, like you know, get yourself fitted. It's like nah, where we done? Dan yeah. men's league. Yeah, I ro- I dominated a men's league last night. I was burying some elbow jumpers uh felt good to be back out there it's been three years it's hype uh yeah. since i tore my acl four years since i played in five on five and felt yeah. good out there felt good out there hey man that really reminded me of that one clip at the end of best gear in the mountain you know with danny dials in his prime high school basketball days you know <laughs> <laughs> i forgot the quote yeah, you gotta you gotta help me out with the quote here what, what did you say what did you say i forgot about that one man oh i said uh yeah, it might not be our last half month. yeah what did i say uh i, was, <laughs> I can't remember when you're feeling it, you gotta shoot. Right? That's right, man. That's right, man. Yeah. That's what I was doing. All right, yeah. Something like that. Might have, might have to clip it in here. That was. Uh, I think I might have to. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. And then recruiting, yeah, we might have to bring in some summer interns, man. We need some more folks. Yeah, I mean the blog is. Uh, it is what it is. I mean everyone. Yeah, like I said on the, uh, you know, might need a little bit more budget transparency. You know, affording affording more salaries ain't the easiest thing. And these Gen Zers, everyone wants to come in for like, you know, 120K, like up front, like salary plus stock options. It's like, what, 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 you know, what are we doing, man? It's a big price, dude. Yeah. I mean, the folks think I'm made of money here. It's like, that's a, that's a lot to sign new, sign new people on to, to blog, you know, twice a week. Yeah. No, it'd be good to, be, to see some new faces at some point though. I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't put it past us in the next six months. Yeah. If I we think, had. yeah, hopefully I might try to do a summer intern recruitment situation where it's like <laughs> folks can come in and write and do some do some editing and make some make some content and that would be hype uh, yeah yeah i don't know man i think we need a little yeah we've we, you know our guy emilio's disappeared we miss we miss our guy the sultan of san bruno oh yeah and uh yeah that's about it and then brand shift i was thinking about that too it's like do we want to how do we want to formulate this is something i want to blog but it's like how do we want to formulate and use the the one take account a little bit more effectively Mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. for current events like for stuff that we're talking about here like yeah. stuff that we're blogging or do we want to just continue to have it be like behind the scenes of the bullshit that we're doing yeah um, there's, there's trade-offs for, for both ways you know it's uh we're still figuring that one out trying to figure out how we want to brand ourselves you know what what uh direction we want to go in but you know i we'll, think it's like yeah i was talking about this but it's just so many of these accounts get massive just showing like highlights of other people's work right in right. sports in particular or like just showing clips of like from news outlets and just i don't know kind of repurposing them maybe throwing a little bit of commentary on there but some folks don't even throw commentary on there some I folks know. just like literally re- i'm like what are the rules here like how does, how does this work this is just like egregious i don't know if it's plagiarism it's not even plagiarism because you're not even trying to be like bashful about it like and to be a plagiarist you need to at least try to seem like it's yours but he's just like yeah you just like post someone else's stuff it's like yeah. clearly not yours and you're like i don't even care about it it's you know like I mean? yeah it's very blatant like digital theft almost you know you're just taking it's weird i don't know I, yeah i guess i don't know what the rules are when it, when it comes to that I, I think it's just like there aren't n- any direct rules but it just in theory should hurt your personal brand but yeah and it's like if you're getting a ton of engagement on a given page like that's how you can I don't know. Man. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you said it before, man. Yeah, the internet's like the wild west right now. You know, it's uh, very maybe strange. it's always been that, but now it's like people are starting. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just an interesting one. So yeah, some philosophy to be doing to, to some philosophy work to be done there, young Reese. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. 
Thanks for joining us on this episode of One Take Tonight. We'll see you next week. That's hype.